I have the fondest memories of, of General Gregg. For Dr. Stephen Anders, he was a soldier, soldier. His introduction to Lieutenant General Arthur Gregg came back in 1984. Anders had just been hired as the command historian for the then Fort Lee. Gregg was already retired, but would return for a number of reasons, including being the regiment's honorary colonel. I would see him all those times. So we became very good friends. And over those 40 plus years of friendship, Anders says he came to know and admire the man. Some are just in the top, top tier, and that was General Gregg. Gregg enlisted in the Army in 1946 at a time when it was still segregated. His first posting to Lee was in 1950 when he was a logistics officer and helped implement President Harry Truman's 1948 desegregation order, as he recalled to CBS 6 last year. As an example, when I arrived, I could not enter the officers club, but by the end of 1950, I was able to go into the officers club. He always saw that in the army, that there's, there is an opportunity. Greg would make the most of that opportunity, serving for several more decades, including another stint at Lee and became the first African-American to reach the rank of Lieutenant General. Soldiering was an affair of the heart. He loved it. Anders says among Greg's visits back to the fort after retirement was to pass along that love and his command philosophy to young officers, lead by example, which he summed up in a General Dwight Eisenhower anecdote. You put a string on the table, you know, you pull it, it's going to go. If you push it, it's not going anywhere. Right. And when the U.S. military began renaming bases named after Confederate generals, Anders was among those advocating for Gregg to become its namesake at Lee. Gregg was eventually picked along with Colonel Charity Adams, who led an all-black female postal battalion in World War II. When the renaming ceremony took place last year, Gregg became the first living person in modern U.S. history to have a base name for them. That makes the, the honor even more special. He built a career on integrity. He built a career on, on honor. While only meeting Gregg briefly that day, the two had more time together less than a month ago when Bendelewski became the new garrison commander, with Gregg calling him over when it was finished. Then shake my hands. All he said is go get him, right? And, um, you know, it was a cool moment for me. And Bendelewski then became another in a long line of officers to receive advice on leadership from Greg. One of the last things he said, my phone's always on, right? And, and I expect you to, to, to call and I expect you to, to uh, you know, ask for, for advice and, and guidance if, if, uh, if that's what you need. And while Greg has now passed, Anders and Bendelewski say his impact will continue to be felt at the fort now bearing his name and the knee officers that will walk through those gates. It's not just a legacy that, that's it's, it's, it's evident today, but it's a legacy that's going to carry on uh, for what will be clearly generations to, to, to come. He was a great mentor to me indirectly, but to, to scores of soldiers. Now, a date for a memorial service has not been set for General Gregg, but the Army says he did request that it be held at Fort Gregg Adams. In Richmond, Cameron Thompson, CBS 6 News.